Hello. <sighs> All right. So once again, working on all the levels for this world. Um, oh, I probably should have had it loaded up. So last time I, I hit a bit of uh, uh, designer's block, I guess. But I, I have two levels pretty solidly put together. Um, and today I think we're going to, instead of going to this one, I'm gonna skip ahead, skip ahead towards the end and work on the more narrative levels. Which are going to be more aesthetic than they are going to be necessarily challenge. But, uh, yeah, we will we will see that. Um, so starting off here, we're going to actually make this a castle level. And delete that. So, once again, we're going to call back to this kind of trope of the uh, opening area that leads to the subworld. Because, I mean, it just ends up being an easy jumping off point. Uh, yep, turn off the erase. We just set this up. So, uh, similarly to, I, I don't know if there's a name for it, um, but it's something I've done for a while, and uh, a specific video essayist that I really like, Folding Ideas, he talks about how a method he will use, that I've I used kind of independently, so I was glad to hear that someone with some education also does it, but... Um, he said that he will just kind of write a general, like, block in a script of just, like, this is where these things are going to happen. Uh, basically an outline. Um, so, in a similar way, I'm just going to set up... Set this up, like, really... Real, like, utilitarian... To... Just have an idea of what I want everything to look like. And I'm going to turn this into underground. Because it's a little less threatening. And what I want is something that's uh, not considered threatening. This particular part of the story. So let's see. How do I want to manage this? Let's get rid of these bones. Let me, let me get rid of the bones. I guess I just gotta get rid of the bit that has the bones on it. Yeah, okay. I want this to, to look friendly for the narrative purposes here. Um, now let's see, if I put a, I put a bit here, and if I put a Mecha Koopa in there... If I put a couple Mecha Koopas in there... Will they attack? Can they see me through that wall? Well, I guess attack. They can't really attack. They just kind of walk around. Okay. So let's make that a little larger. More like a, a home kind of situation. And we will delete that. There, okay. And we're going to make it look like a door. Could I actually just fit a door into there? I think if I put a door, I think if you put blocks and then put a door over top of it, I like this music. This is very, like, um, very Blade Runner kind of music. The very soft jazz. It's a little sorrowful, which is, is perfect for, uh, what I'm trying to convey here. 
Um, okay. So then we're gonna drop this into these spots. And we will And we'll make a large one. So there's like a parent child kind of thing. See? Now let's see. If I make this one red, will that one try and attack? Yes. And in fact it will succeed. So that's going to be a no-go. We want it to be unthreatening. So let's, uh, let's also see. If I set it up like this just for aesthetic, will they be able to walk through the door? They will. Okay. So we're going to need to actually get rid of that. That is not doing what I want it to. Hmm. Let's make this a good bit longer. I, I I want it to be exciting without necessarily being threatening. So the question is how to convey that. to convey that in a system designed for conflict. Um, I need to think about that for a minute. Uh, in the meantime, finish that up. Hmm. You know, I might actually need to think about this one for a little bit longer, but... Give me an idea of what I want to do here. And in fact, let's bring back these. This mushroom motif I feel like could be pretty useful here. Yes. Okay. That could be pretty useful in uh, showing... Showing the ignorance of the player. Or if not the player, at least the player character, who in this case is Mario. But Mario can mean a lot of things, like he is genuinely meant to be kind of a blank slate, who is endearing, but can be uh, many things. Threatening? I don't know. Maybe he could be threatening in some way. Uh, well, well, I want that to be high enough that you can jump over. Um, I think that'll work. Let me see. Yep, okay, that works. Then we will have another space here. Uh, we're gonna make it more into this shape. In fact, sorry, I should bring up the chat and everything to make sure that I can uh, keep track of all this. I'm about to leave that. Okay. Um, chat, chat, Twitch. Can turn off the eraser because that sound is pretty annoying. There we go. All right. Now I have a way to see the chat. I'm, it's over to my left, so I'm not going to be able to see it very clearly. So if I don't immediately respond, I apologize. But I, I will see it eventually. So do not, do not fret. That is, you know, assuming anyone does watch. I have a single viewer, so that's cool. If that viewer is me, I don't know. I don't really know how a Twitch works out. So 
So yeah, we're gonna do this. Okay. Let's actually drop another one of those so it looks more structural. Big news in Mario just recently. Um, they had an announcement trailer for Paper Mario uh, the Origami King? I believe that was called. The new Paper Mario game, which I, I'm a fan of the early Paper Mario games. I don't know. Uh, some of the newer ones. Uh, especially S Sticker Star, I played that. Um, because I didn't have a Wii U, but I did have a DS. And uh, yeah, was not great. It's pretty tedious, to be honest. Um, I've tried playing through the whole thing a few times, and I just, I always get stuck at a certain point because I'm just, I'm so bored. Granted, I get bored with uh, turn-based stuff even in the, at the best of times. Like, I, I find turn-based stuff to be incredibly tedious. So... I guess I'm not the best uh, marker for that kind of stuff. But at the same time, there's like a level of personality in the Super Mario... Rather, the uh, Paper Mario games that's much more entertaining. Um, similarly, the uh, Mario and Luigi games, the like RPG games, especially uh, Partners in Time, which was the one on DS, where they go back and meet their their younger counterparts. Uh, the the movement in that is so incredibly satisfying. Like if if you do it appropriately. Like, if you correctly dodge everything, you don't even necessarily need to level up. Like, you could go the whole game at level one simply by not, like, killing any uh, enemies. And that is a very interesting idea for a turn-based game, which they've explored more. Um, there, There's Bowser's Inside Story, which was... I mean, the internet kind of ruined it, because they immediately saw, like, oh, so you, like, Bow Bowser basically just vores you, and it's like, okay, it, it, true, you are not incorrect, that it, that is what happens, but, it, nah, I don't, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have anything else to say about that, it's, that's just what happens, it's, uh, yeah, I I wish I had something else to say about it, but that that's pretty much what goes down. It's fun though. Like I like all the different bits of like going through the side-scrolling parts and having to like help a Bowser from the inside. Like it's a, it, you're like taking care of a spaceship or like a mech or something. That's a cute idea. But making it like actual, like, creature body parts makes it kind of visceral and gross in a way that I don't think they were intending. So, yeah, I, I do not know about that. Don't know about that. I don't know about that. Whoops. Scoot that over. Yeah, this is a much, um... Yeah, yeah, the, the internet can't let anything be innocent. Listen, Shigeru Miyamoto, or er, Masahiro Sakurai, when he made Kirby, he wasn't thinking about your perverted fantasies. He was just thinking about making a little pink man. Goes around, absorbs absorbs other creatures. It's only as weird as you want to make it. You are the one giving yourself that experience. 
And I'm Masahiro. He he is an innocent innocent child. Too pure for this world. I would suggest those games, though. I, I, they really do hold up. And in fact, um, if I can get my DS emulator working correctly, I may play them at some point. Uh, I've had troubles with my emulator in general, which is why I originally, when I started doing my Banjo-Kazooie streams, I originally just wanted to do Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge. But Open Emu was giving me troubles or open MU, I guess, but, uh, yeah, I, I think I figured it out. I don't know. It's, it's really hard to tell because sometimes it just works and sometimes it just doesn't work. And there's really, really does not appear to be any kind of rhyme or reason to it. So who knows? Oops. Let's, uh, Lower this down. We'll find out on the day. Okay, fair point. Yeah, Kirby. Kirby was not originally meant to be pink. And in fact, I'm pretty sure in his first iteration was black and white. So... Maybe he wasn't necessarily thinking that, but he was thinking about a little guy. A little guy absorbs stuff. Just a little cute man. You draw you draw two circles. Draw or wait is it? You draw a circle, then you add some feet, put in two eyes, this is a big smile, presto, it's Kirby. Pretty sure I got that totally wrong. It was like a whole rhyme to it. Okay, okay, this is looking pretty okay. Uh, this is kind of bare bones at the moment, but a lot of these are gonna be... I'm gonna do, like, a polish run after I've finished up. After I've finished up a lot of the actual, like, uh, structural stuff, I'm gonna go and polish everything up. Hold on, I actually need the, uh... I want you to feel like a monster by the end of it. You've gotta be very... horrified by your reaction to these, these guys who've just been chilling, really. Just been trying to find their way. When you do this, they'll fall to their death. And it makes you sad. I'm actually going to, uh... Twist this. Have it tear through there. And then this whole starting area. Okay. I'm kind of curious. I mean, I've seen some of Sakurai stuff, obviously, with Smash Brothers. He's um, opened up a lot more about the process, especially with these ones where he, like, talks about the process of each specific Smash, uh, new Smash fighter, but, um... Like, I'm curious if he's spoken anywhere about why specifically yellow and pink were the choices for Kirby. Yeah, yellow, pink, and, uh, white. I feel like white could have been okay. It seems like it might, uh, it would pop out. I can understand why he's, like, a pastel color, for sure. Just to, like, stand out, but also... 
Those seem like very odd colors to pick for your character. Especially when your character isn't really like any any kind of real creature. It's interesting with Kirby, it's like, he looks soft and fleshy and stuff, but it's like... He's so clearly non-humanoid that only his his personality is anthropomorphized. And generally, like, that would be pretty unsettling for a human, but they found a way to make him look really uh, endearing. Despite having very little human relation. There's, um... That's another question, because at, at that point in Nintendo, uh, Miyamoto had such a pull that, like, I'm curious how much influence he had on the development of Kirby. But, uh... Yeah, there's a video by Lindsay Ellis, who, she she used to be the nostalgia chick on the Nostalgia Critic site. She was one of the few people on there who, like, actually had, like, skills and talent and stuff. So, you know, don't, don't mark her out just because she was a part of Channel Awesome. She actually knew what was up. Um. Uh. But, um, she has a video specifically about the history of aliens in film and how they... Listen. I don't want to go... Uh, have to explain why the majority of the Channel Awesome producers were not the best. Mainly because, like, as people have begun to understand the nostalgia critic himself is pretty garbage but um yeah the work that she has made after leaving channel awesome is definitely leagues better than anything she made when she was involved with it because they the, the problem with channel awesome is that it's very restrictive it kind of sh forces everyone involved in it to uh, be um, be the same. Like they all have the same cameras, the same lighting, the same like framing of just like center frame, looking right into the camera. Maybe you're on a couch. Maybe you're behind a desk. Whatever. But. Nope. Hold on. But, like, for the most part, anybody with, like, a different viewpoint or, like, a different style just wouldn't be brought onto the site. Uh, who was and wasn't good people on the site? It's kind of case by case. A lot of them were really complacent in some horrible stuff, if you've looked into the drama behind that. <laughs> and considering... Sometimes people are complacent in horrible, scummy stuff because they're trying to protect their job. And like, fair enough, you gotta be able to like put f food on the table. It's still not okay, but it's like... At least there's reasoning behind that. With Channel Awesome, it's like, they weren't getting anything from it. Like, all they were getting was that their videos were being posted on the site as well. So, like, they didn't get paid. They really didn't get much, um, exposure or anything. Because pretty much anybody who went to that site mostly just watched Doug. Some people, like me, went crazy and watched, like, everything. Like, that's the thing. I'm coming at this from... As someone who watched Channel Awesome religiously for, like, years. So I know a lot about it. I knew about a lot of this dirt before it all came out. 
from like people who had left and all sorts of periphery, so I'm not just talking at school on this. Like I was a, a part of that community, and while I wasn't very like interactive, I was very present to all the stuff that was happening, and I I saw I saw people getting just completely screwed over. I sucked. But, you know, some some people got out of it and they were able to make much better content. Some people realized that maybe they didn't want to make content. Lindsay Ellis is certainly one of the people who got out of there that was like really really skilled. Like she she knew what she was doing and she did it well. And she continues to do it well, so definitely check out Lindsay Ellis's YouTube. Because she talks about some really interesting film stuff. Wait! <coughs> oh. Excuse me. She has a lot of great video essays. She had a series for a while. It's interesting, after she left, uh... Ah! I got hand sanitizer all over my lap. Hold on. Um... After she left, she did a series called Loose Cannon for a while, and you could tell that she was still kind of in the mindset of, like, Channel Awesome with that series, where she thought, like, I have to have a series, it has to be something cohesive, there has to be, like, solid branding, but then after a while you see her, with, at least from her work, like, you can tell that she realized, like, oh, I can just make, like, video essays, I can make something that I'm genuinely, like, happy with, that is really cool. Starscream. Starscream 1 was... Star, the Starscream loose cannon's pretty good. Um, you know, there's... A, they go all over the place. There's, like, one about the Grim Reaper. One about, uh... Santa. One about 9-11. Just, like, the, the event and the reaction to it. The 9-11 one is, is... You can see, like a lot of what her video essays would become like creeping in at that point I, I would recommend that series it, it was a pretty decent series and as if you go on there she still has four of her nostalgia critic uh, nostalgia chick reviews although she calls the she's relabeled them as nostalgic woman which is honestly a better name and uh she she has the four that she likes, pretty sure four, maybe five, which is uh, her Freddy Got Fingered review and the three Lord of the Rings reviews. And those are those are certainly some of the best because like when you have to make something weekly and it's not something you're necessarily uh, feeling passionate about, yeah, you probably it's probably not like your best work necessarily. But sometimes something good can s still uh, come of it. Hmm. How do I want to do this? Where do I want to go from here? Ah! Uh, let's go to this. So this area, the last, the last area was going to be. Or actually, hold on. Let me think this out. So. This one is going to start out as a, uh, as an airship, right? No, this one will be an airship. This one will be an airship. And then that will go down to here. Uh, you know what? Actually, I feel like... We could remove this one. Hold on. <clears throat> I'm gonna need to think this out. So, okay. First one introduces the some ideas and foreshadows some things for later. Second one was originally gonna reinforce that, but actually I feel like I already did the turn in the second one, so actually we could get rid of the turn, make confronting the enemy, 
the third level. So the third one would be the airship level. And the fourth one would be that. So I think I could do this in eight. Yeah? Yeah, I think I could do my idea here in eight instead of nine. So um, I am going to go grab some more water. And I will be uh, right back. I have returned. So, <coughs> starting to sound a little husky. Uh, pretty sure it's because I have bad posture when I do these streams. So I'm just like, I'm back a little too much and that puts a little too much strain on, uh, on my voice. But at the same time, who can say? Maybe I'm dying, I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Alright, so I'm gonna delete this level, which I think I go to core spot for that. Core spot. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna delete this one. And then we're gonna can I can I move this? No, but that's fine. Doesn't really matter. Um, okay, so let me think. Synthesis, the turn. Well, this was the turn, so this one is gonna be, this is gonna be an airship level. Although I believe I will start it on the ground and we go up to the airship. So let's make that ground. Um, yeah, let's toss some stuff in here. Uh, actually, let's make the thing that holds the pipe. Uh, clouds. Seems more thematic. Alright. I think... I feel like it, it's it's a cute idea to, uh... 
have it make a sound effect when you do this, but then to have the sound effect match whatever is being played in the actual music in the back. It's, it's a clever way to make it less annoying. Not super effective, though. Ah, uh, this, is, this is still a very annoying sound. Okay. And then let's throw some spikes. Throw some, throw some spikes. Okay. Let's bust some spikes in here. Uh, get out of here. So let's pop some spikes in here to give it sort of a, uh, a diseased look. Or like veins of, of rot. It's just torn through the countryside. So, you'd have to be pretty inept to uh, accidentally kill yourself on those spikes, but let's just double check that that's not. That it's easy enough to see them ahead of time. Yeah. Yeah, that's doable. Okay, and then we're gonna go with some clouds, the cloud blocks. We'll just have those here. We'll put this pipe here. Yeah. Yeah! That's pretty cool. So then that's gonna go to the subworld, which will be horizontal because this will be the airship. So let's make that airship, airship themed. And that's gonna be all the way to the left here. And, uh, I'm gonna need to grab the cloud block again. This will just be to, like, connect the themes. Should be pretty cool. Then, uh, you know what? Let's throw some spikes in to also connect the theme. So it's like a cloud full of spikes. Ain't that scary. Okay. Hello, Kevin Pro Gamer. I hope you are enjoying the stream. It's a much chiller stream than I tend to do, but with uh, Mario Maker, I am staying focused for the most part, so apologies for the uh, low commentary. All right, now I gotta actually build the airship itself. Let's do it. Alright. Uh, well, let me see. That's ground. Some solid platform. Oh, I see. Okay. So let's see. What am I gonna do here? Gotta have a base. Uh, yeah. So it's like crashed in. Hmm. 
has to do. Oh, I see. I see how this works. Okay. So actually, let me back it up a little bit. I don't know what my Switch ID is, and I'm not really uh, going to give it out on stream. Um, if you want to see my Maker ID, I could pull that up on stream here. Hold on. That is... Oh, that being Course World? Uh, how do I check this? Why? There it is, Iggy Kid. Who would have thunk? So that is where you can see my uh, levels. Go back to Course Maker. Sure. Feel free to screenshot. I don't, uh, yeah, if it's, if there was something I did not want the world to see, I would not be streaming it, so. Presumably anything I do on here, I am okay with it being screen, sh screen captured. All right, fill this in. Feel like feel like a, a quick fill. The quick fill option would be very useful for situations like this. Maybe there is one. If anyone if anyone watching knows if there's a quick fill option, please let me know because I would I would uh it would save me a lot of time over doing stuff like this. Not anymore. Let's see, is that going to be big enough? Or do I want to make it larger? I'll make a secondary level, I think. So that it's, uh, kind of sprouting off here. Actually... Mm. Yeah, it's gonna be a little shorter than that. I want to make it an auto scroller as well. I might. Still thinking about that. The airship levels tend to be auto scrollers, but they don't necessarily have to be. Hmm. I'll have to wait to see what kind of challenge um, I decide on for this one. <sighs> I guess the only thing to do is to be methodical and just at a time. Line by line. It's 
It's a lot of portholes. Hmm. Is that necessary? No, I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's, uh... What is it? X. X. Uh, there's like a way to... Yeah, there it is. Zoom out a bit. That's pretty imposing. Okay, that will be the first chunk of this. Let's zoom out a little bit more. But we're gonna make this level a bit larger. So that there is more to do. So let's see, what do I want to, uh, what do I want to do next? I guess some smaller ships after that. Yeah. Or actually, hmm, maybe I should scoot this over a little bit. Yeah. So let's, let's actually make this large one towards not quite the full end of the stage but um right around here i think yeah nah now nah, let's make it to the well yeah let's make it like a screen or two in because you wouldn't have the flagship at the front or the back oh thank you for the follow kevin i appreciate that i'm Doing what I can to get to the uh, 50 needed to be affiliate. And then from there, who knows? Who knows how far we can go? And by we, I mean me. Because anytime somebody says we on the internet, they're just trying to make you feel included, when in reality, it's not really about you. They just recognize that including you in a group makes you feel special. And if you feel special, that makes you want to give them uh, your attention and or money if they sell merch and stuff. It is all marketing, and marketing is all just uh, scummy psychology. It's really... Royal Wii? What do you mean? Oh, wait, like the... It's the Royal Wii? Yeah. Oh, sure. I mean, I'm not nobility, so I can't exactly take credit for using the Royal Wii. But... Um... I'm trying to come up with a pun here. Hold on. Uh, you think if they had a Nintendo console in the Buckingham Palace, they'd call it the Royal Wii? <laughs> I'm so funny. Boo me. Boo me for that. That was terrible. I don't know why I even bother. I don't deserve the attention. Not with such a lackluster performance. Put one last smaller ship. It looks like it's coming coming on its way. And that will be that will be where the uh, second pipe is, which will lead us back down. This will lead us back to the other side. Thank you. Thank you for your booze. Alright. And I'll put that over here. Whoops. I wanna spin that a little bit. Uh, wait, is that two blocks up? Two blocks up. Okay. Just to be sure that it is blocked off. Let's do that. And then we're going to kind of, uh... 
emphasize where you're heading off to. Hmm. wonder if it's full of spikes, what happens when the level ends? Like, I know if there's a spring, Mario doesn't go through and then he gets sad, sure. But, like, what happens if it's just, like, a bunch of spikes in the way? They have a special thing for that. Uh, let's see. Let's find out. Oh, just blocks you. Okay. I will accept that. Let's, uh... Let's make this a little too tall to go on to. Make it a little too tall, and let's uh, give it some spires. So that it's clear it's leading into the... Next area, which is the castle. Make it a little more... That business. And save. So then let's go back to the s second area. Let's continue our work here. So we're gonna have some smaller ships that are coming through. Yeah, more snub nosed, kinda blocky ships. And on those ships, first of all, we'll have some some of these smokestacks. And we'll have some of these guys. But we'll have the red one. So that they, uh, they missile. Oh, okay. I'm just trying to move that one. Guess it interpreted that as a copy, but whatever. And we'll have another one that's a little more long and thin. And I'll have like a gully. Gully, is that what it's called? Galley? I don't know, boats. I'm not a man of the sea. Uh, if, wait. If I go here... Is there a way to get down into that? No? Okay, but I'm gonna need to do something about that. So first of all, let's do this. Let's do that. Let's pop this over that. So that should all come together pretty nicely. Uh, I'm going to need to expand this out a little bit to cover up my seams. Uh, actually, I'll leave that. Um, right. The smokestack is that button. <clears throat> and then we will have something enticing down here, but we'll also have one of these, one of these blue Mecha Coopers. In fact, let's make it two. But then we will have... That. And that. So we'll put a mushroom... 
a bit easier to obtain one. And we'll put a cape feather in the harder to do one. And let's actually make this a little taller. And, uh, I should probably make sure that you can actually get out of this. That should do it. Okay. And then you gotta... Whoop. That's a little tricky. That's just a little tricky. Ooh. That's a little annoying, but is it annoying in a way that, uh... People are willing to accept? Um, I need to make it a little taller because that keeps blocking the laser. I don't want it to do that. Nope, nope, nope. Oh, I missed it. Let me make sure that it's something that can be jumped over. Hello. Kokaria? Kokaria? I don't know how to pronounce that. We are very, very relaxedly watching as I make a fool of myself and show just how lazy I can be when I'm trying to make something fun. Because when you open up one of these levels, it's like, it looks... You're like, yeah, I have all these cool ideas, and then you start actually making them, and you're like, wow, this is... This is real tedious. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if I got the energy for this. But, I, I've started work on it, so... May as well finish it. This is the... The third level I've worked on on stream. Or rather, the fourth level I've worked on on stream. The third level in the... Mario Maker world that I'm putting together. So, hopefully it will be fun for the people. It's hard to tell sometimes, you know? It's hard to tell what people want. And the, they're the, going to be the last person to tell you what they want as well. At least... In general, even if somebody tells you what they think they want, they're usually wrong. And the thing that they want is something they didn't even realize was an option. That's one of the things about design. Is that on a superficial level, it seems like it'd be super easy, but then when you start actually thinking about it, it becomes, becomes a whole tangled mess. Yep. It's, uh, one of the best examples of that is Tribes 2, which Tribes 2 was... Basically, the idea was... It, it was a shooter. It was like a team-based shooter. But you all were wearing skis on mountainous terrain, and you all had, like, jump packs. So everybody could, like, jump up hundreds of feet and then come down and zoom along on skis, and go crazy fast. And everything I've seen s makes it look super fun. But you can't play it anymore because the devs decided to do everything that uh, the fans wanted. Every little thing that people said, they were like, all right, we're implementing it. Which meant that all of the really stupid things the fans wanted got implemented too. And that means that, uh, it ended up a crappy game. That's, that's, that's unfortunate. It, uh, it won the Penny Arcade Best Game Ever Until They Ruined It Award, which is pretty prestigious. 
Although, if you read Penny Arcade, you know, you know how facetious they are with those uh, awards. But you know what? Sometimes sarcasm reveals the truth. And in that case, it, it really was the truth. gonna put these here so that uh sort of a dual path thing going on or you can just run across or you can drop down to get some goodies and a little extra challenge we'll make we'll make three and we will put Put uh, feather in this one. Some coins in this one. And just a standard super mushroom in that one. This guy. Put this guy. Whoops. Well. Yeah, yeah, I'll accept that. Um, although I'll put him down here. And I'll put this guy... Over here. I'll delete that guy. Yeah, okay. And the final ship, this is the big boy. This is where it all comes together. Yeah, it's pretty sad. I mean, it, the the Tribes 2 thing happened so long ago that it's like, it's gaming legend at this point, but it, it was, uh, yeah, that's what happens. Sometimes, some games, they only, only exist for a certain amount of time, and if it's not a first person experience, it's like, you can't, you can't archive a multiplayer experience, you know? It has to be... It has to be... Something that you play in the time. Similar to, uh... Uh... NS2. Natural Selection 2. Which was, like... The original one was, like, a mod, I want to say, for PUBG? Or not PUBG, uh... Counter-Strike. I think... I'm not sure, but the idea was that it um, it was basically like a, an asymmetrical shooter where one team was like space marines and the other team was basically aliens. Yeah, lost media is is it's pretty sad. I like pres media to be preserved in in some way. It's granted a lot of the media that doesn't get preserved is because it was bad. But sometimes it's just because it was misunderstood. You know, sometimes really good media gets just thrown under the bus. Um, but natural selection too. So one team is Space Marines, the other is effectively Xenomorphs. And so it's basically Aliens, the game. But the twist is... That the... The, um... Uh, there is one player who is in a command seat, basically. You, like, go into this pod... And... It goes into an overhead view of everything that's happening, and now it's an RTS for you. So you like drop weapons, you do all sorts of upgrades, so you are now doing a strategy RTS. And the best part about it is not only are you doing this to help out everybody who's currently doing the FPS side, but also you can switch out. 
Like, you can just wa get out of the thing, and someone else can take over for you. And it's awesome, but last I checked, the servers are kind of dead. So, you can't really play it anymore. But I don't know, maybe I'll check again. Maybe the servers have had a revival. I have it. I could, uh, probably play it on stream, maybe? I don't know if my computer could handle that one for a stream. But we will see. We will see. That's a tentative tease if I can get it working. Could be cool. Could be cool. Okay. <sighs> Hello. YT Math, you guys are just bots, aren't you? <laughs> like, I know one, I'm not c accusing you of being a bot, I know you're real. But like, uh... <laughs> okay, if you say so. <laughs> I don't know, I just keep seeing all these names that have a lot of uh, random stringed characters together, and all they say is hi, so... Excuse me if I, uh, if I don't see a lot of, g in g uh, genuineness from, from that. I do appreciate y'all watching, and hey, if, if you're watching, I'd appreciate it if you, whoops, I'd appreciate it if you followed. I'm still trying to get to the, uh, I'm still trying to get to the, the 50 that you need for, uh, affiliate ship or whatever. All right, all right. I guess I'm wrong. Now that are your really good bots. You're the ones that, that know to deny being bots. Have, like, speech analysis. It's hard to tell. I don't know the Turing test. So I don't really know how to administer it to see. I'm a little busy right now, so... Whatever, dude. As far as I'm concerned, bots are... Bots are okay by me. I'm not going to be robophobic about it. If you want to if you want to watch me play games, hey. You deserve as much right as anybody else. I actually I just watched um Neuro Network. Well, n you you wrote Neuro Network, but I presume you mean Neuro Network. I actually just recently watched um The Animatrix all the way through for the first time. And the interesting thing about that is that, uh, one of those, one of those segments, the one that's a two-parter, really, like, kind of makes you feel like the, the humans deserve to get eradicated. Like, I don't know if you guys have seen that, but, like... What a, it just shows like a, it, it basically just shows how the apocalypse that led to the Matrix happened. And just like how, how just like awful human beings were to robots, and how robots tried their best. That's true. In fact, someone has pointed out there are some humans who no longer pass the Turing test, or at the very least. Yeah, that's the thing, is like, someone pointed out, it's like, it's not so much about passing the Turing test, it's about a lot of people not knowing, t not knowing not only not how to administer the Turing test, but uh, not thinking to administer the Turing test. I've seen a lot of people get into long, heated debates on Twitter with very obvious bots. I actually just tweeted about this earlier, uh... I was looking through one of the trending tags, which I, I do not suggest ever doing because it's just... It's a lesson in pain. But, uh... There were like a handful of tweets that were very clearly bots because they all used the exact same reaction image and the same template for, like, tweets. So, like... The fact that people were actively replying to them and getting angry is, uh... Ooh, it depresses me for the human race. It really does. 
but at the same time, you know, I, uh, I think it just depresses me that people are wasting so much time, energy, and anger on it when they could be doing other things. I... I'm not sure I entirely parse what you were saying, Philippe, but, uh... Yeah, I feel like the Turing test is just, more than anything, outdated. It It's something that needs to be updated to uh, compete with modern computing. Oh, no! This is a problem. Hold on. Wait, uh, yeah? Do I want to stack? Hmm. Maybe I do. Let's see. Let's see what happens with a stack like this. Um. Yeah, let's see how this works. I don't know. I know. I've looked up the Turing test before, and I don't. I, I, it's something that I just can't commit to memory, but I recognize its utility. Okay, so by default, those have coins in them. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about how to make this actually, like, challenging. Oh, I see what you mean. Like, they, they actively use the Turing test as a benchmark first. I mean, that makes sense. If we have a test specifically designed to tell whether or not a machine is advanced enough, why wouldn't you use it as your uh, your low barrier to entry? Oh, man. I'm going to take a quick break and uh, I try and do something about my voice. It's getting a little dried out. I'm going to take some DayQuil. I don't know, but I will uh, be RB.
I'm so sorry. I just realized that I left it on the race this whole time. And you had to listen to bow, 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 bow. Excuse me. I can't, I, oof. I'm so sorry. That, that was a terrible faux pas as far as this game's concerned. So, okay. I'm going to say right now I'm getting kind of a little burnt out as far as, uh, like, I'm just having trouble focusing and, like, thinking of good ideas. So what I'm going to do, my usual trick to uh, get past that, is to play some other levels. Get a little inspiration. So let's go to the courses and play some of the top ten. Uh, hot courses, popular... Uh, let's go popular. So I'm going to play the top ten popular courses. Koopalings, Battle Castle. Let's go. Right? Ah, okay, that's an interest. That could be a, a bit of a design for them. Uh, whoop, whoop. Watch out. Uh, oh, okay. So I gotta... And then you gotta hit, and then hit. There we go. Okay, got the key. I see what they're doing here. Just like a little gauntlet. Your boy Yiggy. Where's that Lemmy? I always get those two mi mixed up. Uh, I feel like I messed that up. Hmm. Whoops. Do I gotta wait for him? Oh, I see. Okay. I see. It is I see. Well, nine more, I guess. Save. Okay. I know. I feel like my main problem creatively is always that I like really overthink stuff. So I feel like that's what I might be doing with my levels as it is currently. But uh, whoop! Get her out of here. Oh, one up. Okay. Um, the one ups are not very useful generally. Listen, I I usually use Iggy, which I would say maybe this one is Iggy. Or maybe this one's Lemmy. <laughs> I anytime I have a chance, I usually use Iggy as my my go-to. But um, I don't know. I can't tell him apart. I can tell Morton apart because he's a he's like a, a pug. Then something I'm supposed to do. Wait, if I hit this, oh, okay, you can hit it through those blocks. Oof, I missed though. Or I guess I hit, but eh. okay. So this is just eight simple little boss concepts. That's cute, fun. Uh, whoa, whoa. Yeah, this one's Morton. This one's Morton, and I can tell Wendy O because she's the girl, and also kind of pug-faced. And Ludwig von Koopa because, I mean, he's got that hair. He's got those flowing locks. I do like this. I like how he uh, pops up and appears on different platforms. There we go. Uh, let me through. Oh, jeez. Oh. Wait, is this Morton and that was Wendy-O? <sighs> Everything I know is a lie. I know, they were also never in... They were never in, uh, the Super Mario 1, like, style, so it's hard to tell. 
I don't know, man. I haven't played, like, Super Mario World in a long, long time. In fact, that's something I could do. Like, because I have the, the subscription. This one's Ludwig Vaughn. That one I can say with confidence. This is Ludwig Von Koopa. You guys caught me. I'm a fake gamer. I've been faking it this whole time. Oh, that's cute. I like that. With the P-Switch. That's quality stuff. I like it. Okay. That deserves to be that high up. Brack enemies wilderness. Do they... Do they mean black enemies? Guess we'll find out. Unless they mean Brack, like from Space Ghost. Space Ghost Coast to Coast! Oh. That wasn't so smart. <laughs> I gotta say, this is one of my favorite tracks from Mario. It's just real peppy and fun. It really makes me want to play Super Mario 64, but they haven't ported it yet. I'd love to see a port of that and Super Mario Sunshine for the Switch. And if they make those, let me tell ya. Get the fucking Oscars ready, bro. Uh-oh. I died. Okay. Oh, man. I've been thinking a lot about, um, specifically Mario Maker as far as level design goes, and something that I've noticed a lot when I watch other people play is, um... Oof. I got distracted. Uh, something I've noticed when other people play is that a lot of times there'll be a lot of really easy parts that are kind of tedious, followed by a really hard part. And it feels more punishing to have to go through all of that because you're wasting your time. Your time is a real-life resource. It's not just, like, a video game resource. The GameCube, yeah, the GameCube is very ignored. I don't know, um, I don't know why Nintendo seems to treat it like they're, <sighs> like their bastard child when it's, it's got some of the best games that have come out. I mean, honestly, it feels like with the Wii and the Wii U, they really rested on their laurels, like, uh, you know, a Skyward Sword was kind of, kind of crap, and then, um, Honestly, Super Mario Galaxy, not terrible, but it's just, like, kind of dull in comparison to a lot of other Mario games. Um, which I encourage you to replay it if you disagree with me there and think honestly on how engaged you feel. Um, that's from a design standpoint, you know. You can engage with a game that's not necessarily well-designed. It is perfectly okay to engage with something that other people don't enjoy or feel academically is underwhelming. Because if, 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 if it's real to you, then it's real to you. Ooh, rating. How does that work? I'm still very new to uh, streaming, so I don't, really, I don't really know the terms. I, I, I think it's a good thing. If it is, I appreciate it. Oh. Woo. Okay, got it. Hello. I am uh I'm I'm trying to get some uh inspiration for my levels. Cause I I've I've been getting kind of creatively burnt out on them because I came up with the, the outline for what my world is gonna be and I've made a couple of the levels. Oh I was not paying attention. 
Hello, Pax Man. Wonder. Oh yeah, all the icons show up over there, so I, I set it up pretty good. Let me know if there's any weirdness with the audio or visual. I know that the, the frame rate's a little janky. Um, that's mainly because my computer's not quite strong enough. Apologies for that. Um, but let me know if you can actually read the chat on stream. I, I adjusted it because I realized a, a little while ago while doing some tests that, uh, it was not actually the, the, the chat was not actually visible. Oh, jeez, I gotta go faster. Go, 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 go! Go! Oh! Right at the wire. I got it. No! Morton! This one's Morton. Yes? Yes. I'm fairly certain. Oh, right. He's the one that, like, freezes you. I think you can get him with fireballs, right? It just takes, like, a lot. It's interesting with the Koopalings that now there's variety in bosses to see what uh, people decide to use for their boss. I'm personally going to go with Iggy because, I mean, Iggy's supporting Iggy's. It's just uh, just how you got to go. Oh, whoa, whoa! I should have been running. I said run. Why wasn't I running? Listen. Sometimes you underestimate Mario, you know? It's one of those. Okay. Sometimes you underestimate Mario because it's like the most basic idea of a, uh, of a video game. Honestly, like, you run and you jump. There's not much else to it on a basic level. Whoops. But... It's, uh, it's interesting how complex it can be and how, like, difficult it can be, honestly, under the right circumstances. And I'm glad that we do have an official, like, level creator to play around with things. I'm not, I'm not as much, um, personally, I'm less of a video game designer as I, as I do a tabletop design. It's a hobbyist thing, currently. Eventually, it'd be cool to, like, do it professionally. And I am working on some stuff. I have ideas in the bank that I'm putting together. But, you know, when those will actually come together, who knows? I'll be sure to update y'all as I, as I do it. Whoop. Jump. And if I could ask y'all a favor... If you haven't already to uh, give me a follow, because I am trying to get to the 50 follows. Yeah. I mean... <laughs> it is like... It, it doesn't even necessarily need to be advanced, it's... It's... It's elegant. Because it's... It's... You can do so much with just the simple building blocks of Mario. Like, that's what I've noticed, like, making my own levels, is, like, with just the simple building blocks of these different pieces, it j can come together into something that's surprisingly complex. And that's what we're really finding with all these different levels that people are doing now. Let's go! One thing I appreciate is that there are more run levels instead of just, uh, whoops, messed that up. There are more run levels instead of just auto-scroller levels. Because the, the auto-scrolling levels are cute and all, or rather the auto-Mario levels are cute, but they, they ended up just being like Mario Paint of just putting together stuff, but, uh, with these... Well, yeah, it's still pretty low skill because it's just timing, it, and it turns Mario into a rhythm game. It's still pretty fun. Oh, crap. Should have paused. <clears throat> but, uh... Oh my god, sorry, I looked at the chat. Whew. This time. 
it basically just turns Mario into Bit Trip Runner, which is a game I enjoyed. I enjoyed it even more when it was called Magic Lantern. What was it? What was it called? There was a game, it was like a Flash game that was just like Music Lantern. And it was just set to, it was set to uh, Black Betty and like uh, the Ode to Joy, I think? Uh, what? Did I mess up? I think I messed up. Um... Yeah, it's still a game. It's just... That's what I'm saying is like... It's still Mario. It's still all the same pieces. But it totally changes the feel. Oh, I see. Okay, this is like a companion shell thing. I like that. Uh, whoa. What do I... Uh, I hope I didn't mess something up. Ah. I do not know what these gold pieces are. Oh, I see. Oh no! Oh boy! Okay. That was exciting. Oh boy! That was very fast. Let's try that again. It was real quick. But yes, if you were enjoying this, please follow. I stream about three times a week at least. Ugh. Sometimes this stuff, uh, a lot of Banjo Kazooie content. I did just beat Banjo, the first Banjo Kazooie, but I do uh, plan on playing Banjo Tooie, and I'm gonna actually, before that, play Banjo Kazooie Grunty's Revenge, which is the Banjo Kazooie game everybody forgot about because it was on GBA, but it is a full-fledged Banjo-Kazooie. So I'll be doing that on Sundays. Tomorrow I'm gonna be playing Help the Hero. Whoops. It's Mario, you run right, except for the handful of times when you run left. And those handful of times, it's just not intuitive. Um, which is like a Flash game by the Super Flash Brothers that I enjoyed a great deal and I'll probably finish that whole game in that stream. It's pretty short. But, yeah, come check that out, you know? And I would appreciate the follow. It is free for you. It's not, uh, the, the subscriptions cost money, but the follows do not. And I would appreciate a follow because that means I'm ever closer to the 50 that I need to be affiliate. At which point I can get subscriptions, which would be cool. Whoa, whoa, oh, oh, okay. It's one of these. I didn't even look at the title of this one. Okay. So, yeah, I guess I just got... Just gotta trust it. Let's go. Ah, I messed up. Let me try that again. Whenever you're just that tiniest bit off and hit a really obvious obstacle, it feels so demoralizing. It's like, come on, I've been playing, I've been playing these games since I was a little kid. You th think I can't do it? But uh, apparently sometimes you can't do it. I have to remember to only look at the chat between runs because I keep looking at it during a run and immediately dying. Okay, that it worked that time. I don't know why it didn't work the first time. Whoops. Oh. Whoa. 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 Okay. That worked. Oh, jeez. Oh, man. Oh, there's a lot happening. Okay, this is basically just an auto Mario. There we go! <laughs> That's cute. <clears throat> uh, more events below. Why is that there? Oh. I guess I got other followers now. Thank you to everyone who has followed. I will... I may not have the best stream, but I am doing everything I can to make it the best it can be. 
put a lot of work into setting it up and such. So, hopefully, hopefully it shows. Playable mushroom. Okay. Technical. Oh, I'm ready to get technical. Let's see it. Uh, oh. 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 Okay. This is cute. Hmm. Huh. How does this work? Because <clears throat> I've seen it was something like this done with enemies that follow you, but how does the mush... I guess, does it just follow you? I haven't played around with the Super Mario Bros. 2 mushroom in any levels yet. This is surprisingly easy to control. I... Oh, oh, I guess I was still going. Wow, yeah, this is, uh... It's the jump that confuses me. How do I... How am I getting it to jump? Nope. Nope, I messed up. I love the Super Mario Land music. Super Mario Land was, like, the first Mario I played. I always saw, like, Super Mario World, and I'm like, it looks so fun! But I didn't have a Super Nintendo. But I did have a Game Boy, and so I played... The crap out of, uh... Super Mario Land. Super Mario Land and Bonk's Adventure. Bonk's Adventure on the Game Boy was pretty fun. It was very Japanese. Uh... In a way that, you know... If you play it, and you play a bunch of other stuff, you, you'll you recognize, but like... It's hard to describe, but it's very... Oh my god, I keep missing this jump. It's very Japanese. Much in the same way, I listen to, um, I'm a big fan of Shut Up and Sit Down, which is a, a YouTube channel where they review board games and other tabletop stuff, and they have a podcast, and, uh, they give their impressions of games on the podcast, and something they said is that this one, push up, okay, this one game that they played, they, they talked about how Asmodee, which is, like, the biggest, like, board game publisher and has uh, ass assimilated a bunch of others, they they play a, um, or they, they are friends with the European branch of that, and sometimes they talk about how board games are too French, which they didn't understand until they played this specific game, which, the name of which ex escapes me, but, uh... Yeah, that's that's something as well that apparently is the thing is being too French in design. That would be cool. I think that was a problem in the the uh, original as well when they had all the amiibo support, which I wish they would bring back the amiibo support. Having only a, a couple of other types of Mario is um is uh, I don't know. It's it's underwhelming, disappointing even, but uh you know. At least in those, you could be them. Oh boy, okay. Um... But yeah, no, I... It, it seems like a... Kind of disappointing implementation. That they didn't allow you to actually... Oh, that's annoying. To actually, like, finish the level as the character you were playing. Oh my god! Oh! That is a sensory overload. Oh, and I guess there were Bowsers up there. Okay. Oh yeah, Koopa Car. Oh my God. I don't. I do not know what's happening. Ah, uh, okay. I think that messed with my capture, that was such an overload. I'm gonna boo that one, that one was... That one was kind of terrible. <sighs> 88 like, percent, who like gave up? That was not hard. Um, seed, with three E's. 
Seed. Oh, I can hear that reverberating in my headphone. Weird. Go. Honestly, I might take back what I said about the runners. These are getting a little, uh... A little, uh, annoying. Oh, okay. I guess it still works out. That was an interesting idea. To make it feel like you... Oh! Weird misdirects. Kind of like that. I like it. Uh, what was that? The sixth? The seventh. All right, let's play the last three. Play the last three and then maybe check out some new courses. See what people have been uploading lately. So this is a remake, it says, which I'm not usually a fan of, but maybe it's good. Who knows? Also, I find it really disappointing that you can't use the uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 mushroom in this mode. At least, I don't think you can. I haven't seen anybody do it. Because that would look really, really silly. And I think... It would make me giggle. And was the point of Mario if not to giggle? Okay. Okay. This is really what a. Oh! No. Oop! Capture. Oof. I might have to end the stream soon. I think that my capture might be overheating a touch. But, uh. I will try and get through these last couple levels. Whoops! I was distracted. But, uh... Yeah, I think that'll do it. In fact, my Switch might be overheating a touch, too. I have the original Switch, which, by my understanding, uh, has a less advanced cooling system than the, the newer Switches. But I bought mine on launch day, baby. It was my it was my birthday when this launched. I believe I turned 20. Oh. Yep, there goes that. Well, okay, I'm going to finish off this level and then end the stream to figure out what that's about. But I will be streaming again tomorrow with a Flash game, which, you know, that should be uh, less of a pain. How do I get up there? Oh, man. I might not even be able to finish the level. Sorry, sorry. This has not happened before. I don't know what's up. I don't know if it's a problem with the system or it's a problem with the uh, capture card or what, but I'll have to uh, figure that out, do some troubleshooting off stream. But, uh. Yeah, I am not impressed with Elgato. To be honest, their hardware and their software is pretty garbage. In my experience so far. <sighs> Honestly, this level's kind of boring. You know what? Yeah, I think I'm gonna end it there. Something's up with the, uh... With my Elgato. Which is not the first time that's happened. But thank you all to anybody watching. Thank you to anybody who watches later on the past broadcast or in my Twitch archive channel on YouTube, which you can find in the panels below this. You'll also find my schedule for other upcoming events. I update that weekly, and I try and have at least a day's advance notice, but, and, but, you know, subject to change. All right, I'm, I'm not, this isn't my job or anything, so I will do it when I do it. That's just a general idea of what I'm going to do, but that should give you an idea. I'll be streaming tomorrow, playing some Help the Hero which is a fun Flash game. Uh, gonna play some Banjo-Kazooie Grunty's Revenge, which was originally for the Game Boy Advance on Sunday. And then next week I will play some other stuff, Animal Crossing, which I skipped out on Animal Crossing this week because not a lot changed. But as of today, I actually got uh, the KK Slider um, visit. So I finally have something big to show on the stream. So I will do that. 
So tune in for those if you can. Follow if you want to see notifications for those. Or just in general, I'd appreciate a follow. You know, it helps me out a great deal. And it's free to you, you know, as long as you uh, do mind getting notifications whenever I stream. Go check out my YouTube, check out my Twitter, all that stuff. It's, you can see it down on this bottom bar or, like, linked in the panels below this. So thanks again for watching, and uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate all you, you know. I, I, I'm doing my best with this stream, obviously. I have technical issues because this is not the best setup for streaming. I'm just using a, a laptop and such, but I'm doing the best I can. And I appreciate all of you for coming along for the ride. Anyways, have a good evening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.